Hey, everybody. Welcome to another show. You ought to know Jim Hall here. You there, wherever you happen to be, watching us on the Internet, www.odysseytv.org, and here on Channel 6, Odyssey Television. And this show, You Ought to Know, today features us in the high desert. We're in Phelan, California, not too far from Victorville, not too far from the mountain communities, and yet you're going to see some wild animals on this show. And not just me and the guest we interview, but some exotic wild animals. We're talking about tigers all right here from the Forever Wild Exotic Animal Sanctuary in Phelan, California. We're going to find out how they live, about their lives, and how you can participate in helping take care of these animals right here. Why? Because you ought to know. Stay with us, everybody. We've got a great show. Welcome back, everybody. Jim Hall, you ought to know. And I'm in Phelan, which is not very far from Victorville, Hesperia, Apple Valley. We're, of course, in the high desert. And here we are at a show. This is kind of different from what we have normally done in the past. Let's introduce you first off. Your name is? Shemaine Omquist. Okay, Shemaine, let's talk about the organization. They can't read it on your shirt, but we've been out here walking around, and we can tell in the background there's something different here. So where are we at? Uh, well, we're at Forever Wild Exotic Animal Sanctuary. Forever Wild yes. Exotic Animal Sanctuary. Yes. All right. So what does that mean? That means we are a nonprofit 501c3 uh, rescue facility. We rescue animals all over the country and we give them permanent homes. Well, and you've been doing that how long? We've been doing it for about 10 to 11 years. Have, well, that's a good point to start. 10 to 11 years. Have you done it always at this location here? Uh, well, we started um, learning about what was going on before we moved up here, and the purpose of moving up here from Huntington Beach was to start the sanctuary. So you were in Huntington Beach, California, Surf City, Yes. and here you are, you come to the high desert. Yes, it was quite a shock to my system, let me tell you, <laughs> but it was completely worth it because um, we've been able to do so much that we would never have been able to do in Huntington Beach. Well, let's talk about the background now as you prepared to do this in Huntington Beach, California, of all places. Um, why did you get into this, number one, and how did you prepare to do this? Well, my husband has been involved with exotics all his life, from his grandparents, and mostly into herpetology and then into falconry and then we got into the big cats when we got married. Um, I prefer the cats. They seem just a little bit more cuddly and stuff. Not to say that the animals I have are cuddly, but you kind of get the drift when we're talking about, you know, reptiles versus big cats. Um, but, you know, I just was basically a natural at it. I mean, I support my husband 100%. It was always his dream to get involved with the animals. And I just, I'm very goal-oriented. I'm very stubborn. And I believe in complete justice. So um, when it came to the rescuing, I mean, the passion I have and the determination and the dedication I have for it, I mean, it was just natural. Well, you talk about, uh, you said two things there regarding these animals. Number one was justice and your dedication to it. So I take by that statement alone, the animals that you have here that we're going to see today are here for life. Yes, they have permanent homes here. We do not we do not breed, we do not buy, we do not sell, and we do not trade any of our animals. When they come through our doors at Forever Wild, they stay here until their time is up. All right, so let's tell people where we are. We're in Phelan. Uh, we are where in Phelan? Uh, we are off of Phelan Road, we, uh, close to the 395 um, on the south side, and uh, we have eight and a half acres here. Um, we possibly, one of our goals is to maybe move, but at this time, this is where we are right now. Well, a lot of people are going to learn about the sanctuary and the animals during this show, and as they do, they can actually be involved because they can actually donate, and they can help take care of the animals with you. Is that true? Yes. Thank you. There, We have a different little plans that we put together so that people can help make the difference with us because being a nonprofit sanctuary, a 501c3, you know, that's how, the only way you can keep your doors open. That's the only way we can put food in their mouths and shelter for them. So um, they can join the 400 Club, which um, last year it was $4,000 a month to run Forever Wild. It has gone up some because we have add new, added new members of the family, you know, more big cats and reptiles. Uh, but we're still sticking to the name 400 Club. It's $10 a month for a year, and if we can get, you know, enough people 
then it will totally take care of all the sanctuary's needs. We also have sponsor and animal packages where for $25 you get a biography, a picture, um, a certificate of adoption. Now you can't, people say, oh, can I take the animal home? Nope. You can't take the animal home, but you can help feed the animal. Um, it's your choice whether you want to do a flat $25 or you want to do a monthly $25. It's completely up to them, and we put in a little surprise in there, too. And it could be mailed to anything, anybody. It, it could be like Christmas presents, birthday presents, um, co-worker, the, any, any, any type of occasion you want. We can mail it to the person with a dedication letter in it. Um, well, you have a website that people can go to? Yes, yes. It's the number four and then everwild.org. And it has all of the options there on how to help us. And it also has a lot of information um, generally on the animals, but it also has um, information on how we are an anti declaw facility. It has um, information on uh, the sponsoring. You can get the forms on there. You can do PayPal online. It gives the biographies of each animal and it has all the pictures of the animals. Well, that's going to be interesting. We'll talk about some of that because we're going to meet some of the animals here or at least see some in the background that's yeah. what we keep our distance away from and remembering these are wild animals are they not yes that's one thing with dealing with uh, being a sanctuary is um, educating people of knowing that uh, these guys no matter how you know cuddly they look or um, how they come up and rub and talk to us and stuff they're always going to be a tiger they're always going to be a leopard they're always going to be wild well on this one right over your shoulder here is who this one right here is Taj. We just got him um, a year ago, December. He came to us blind from a cir traveling circus. They couldn't use him in the act, so um, there was a possibility of sending him back to the breeder, and the breeder just bluntly said that if you send him back to me, we will euthanize him. So and we couldn't let that happen. So when we learned about it, we definitely um, decided to take him in. All right, we're going to talk more about that in just a couple minutes. We're going to see more of the animals, and we're going to talk about the declaw, or no declaw claw as it is and it's all here on this show we're at the forever wild exotic animal sanctuary and we're in Phelan California and we hope you're enjoying this show because you can help support the animals by helping to donate and make sure they get fed and they have their place right here for life they'll live here they're not going to be euthanized put to sleep uh, taken out somewhere they're actually going to live their life right here at the sanctuary. We'll talk more about that. Stay with us. Why are we here? Simply because you ought to know. Welcome back, everybody. Jim Hall, you ought to know, in Phelan, California, the high desert, have to explain where Phelan is for a lot of the people watching, in Victorville, Apple Valley, Hesperia, but we're here in the high desert. And we have our friends in the mountain resorts area. We want to say hello to Lake Arrowhead, Big Bear, Crestline, Running Springs, Blue Jay, uh, and there's other communities I forgot, but as you watch this show, you ought to know. Welcome to the Forever Wild Animal Sanctuary. Introduce yourself again. Shemaine Omquist. Shemaine, tell us how many people does it take uh, first off out here working to keep this sanctuary alive and going? Um, I think right now we're up to about 15, 16 people. And these are volunteers? Yes, that includes our board, of, the board, and also my volunteers that come and help clean and feed. All right, now let's talk about the animals. You mentioned declaw or no declaw. A, a declawing an animal from the household cat, if I didn't want the cat clawing my friend, it's really inhumane, is it not? Yeah, they're, they're, the people we work with is the PAW Project, Jenny Conrad. Um, she's done a lot of studies, and she has proven that it is detrimental to their health. I mean, in, in some cases, death. Well, it's been described to me, people think it is harmless, just removing the claws. But if we think in people terms, the human terms, it would be like us cutting our toes off. It's actual bone, and it actually d destroys the uh, structure, the skeletal structure. Yes, and um, what happens is, is with cat's declaw, is a lot of times the vets don't remove all of the P3 bone. What happens to that is, over time, it will regrow back, but it doesn't regrow back normally. It comes out deformed, so it could go on the top of the foot, on the bottom, on the sides. Um, we've had some really bad cases of infection, um, which that could, in turn, cause the death. If you don't catch it, um, you have the festering pus, which is, you know, really nasty, but it goes through their bloodstream into their kidneys and... Sure, like gangrene would to a human. 
Exactly. All right, let's talk about some of the animals. Right behind us in the cage here, we have, I'm going to take some guesses now, because we've already, as we walked around earlier getting ready for the show, I talked about a black panther. There really isn't such a thing as a black panther, is there? No, they're black leopards. You could actually see the spots if you actually get them just right in the suns. They're actually a really dark brown with the very dark, dark black spots. All right, now who is this we see here? This is Oscar. He's a spotted leopard, and uh, we just acquired him late last year from a magic show in Vegas and he apparently was trying to jump up on the magician during the um, program they had so they couldn't use him anymore and they had new cubs coming in so they had to get rid of the old the older cats. What is his life like working a show like that? What are these show cats? What do they have to look forward to? Um, well, you know, I'm sure possibly there are some cats out there that do enjoy performing possibly but you're looking at being in an enclosure and then having to be loaded up in a van or a truck and then having to go and do your little act being loaded back in a sh uh, truck or a van and then being back taken back to your cage all right well um and we're talking about a cage these cages for instance the tigers that we see now right behind us this is who this is jade she's a golden tabby tiger Okay. So she and she came from where? She came from Oregon. Uh, she came from a place up there that breeds for, from what I understand, Siegfried and Roy. Um, it could be wrong, but sometimes we just go by what the owners tell us. And she didn't come out with the right coloring, um, so she was uh, donated to us, from what they say, uh, because she was basically, in a nutshell, not worth any money to sell. Now, she's in what size enclosure here? She has 400 square feet. Um, we would love to be uh, to be more, but obviously steel is a lot of money. Well, wait a minute. 400 square feet. Now, she came out of an environment where she was contained on a daily basis in how large a space? Um, well, because we got her at four months, uh, she wasn't in a very large enclosure at that time because she was so little. Uh, the regulations are 300 square feet per tiger, but we always like to go bigger and better. But they are, when they're being used for circus, for shows, magic shows, shows, uh, traveling shows, and so on, they're usually kept in small containment cages, and that's pretty much where they're at unless they're performing. Yes, when we start talking, getting into the more traveling cats, like the circuses especially, as long as an animal can stand up and uh, turn around, that's as big as the enclosure has to be. So when you look at my den boxes, my den boxes most, most of the time are bigger than what the cat was living in day-to-day -day basis. All right, now who is this one we're looking at? This is Taj. He came from the circus because he was blind. They didn't want him. He would have been euthanized. Now, he functions well or seems to move around here well. Is that he learns his way around, I guess, his enclosure. Well, he actually, fortunate for him, and there was a possibility when we took him in, that he grew out of it. Oh, he did. He so did. he is a he has he vision. He does have vision, but we have noticed he has bold legs and he's short for his age. So there is a possibility. My vet said with blood work we need to do on him that he might have dwarfism. Any idea how old this one is? This one is approximately about um, two years old, and um, the dwarfism. It may be a result from the inbreeding. It's basically these cats come from what are, are considered like puppy mills, would oh, be sure. tiger mills. Yeah. All right. Who's our next one down here? This is more. This is much larger animal. Who is this? Yes, he's full grown. He's nine years old. This is Czar. Him and his brother came to us um, from a traveling circus that traveled all over the United States. And uh, unfortunate for him, we got him at when he was about nine months old. He lived in a dog crate in a fifth wheel trailer. And the only time he was able to come out was when they were either feeding him or cleaning his urine or feces out of it, the crate. So he's completely rubbed off the front of his face because he had nowhere to go. Well, he's making uh, uh, noises. He's not real happy that we're this close to him, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think he might feel a little, um, you know shy around the cameras uh, but we did fe just feed him before we started taping so he may still have that little bit of possessiveness like you know get away don't steal my chicken I don't think any of us here will steal his raw chicken but they they get very possessive over their food all right we're gonna be right back we're gonna take a look at three or four more tigers and then there's some other surprises here at the sanctuary as well yes. correct yes there is <laughs> all right we're gonna do that so don't go anywhere we're here at the forever wild animal sanctuary in Phelan why are we here we're learning about these exotic animals and we're finding out how their lives are gonna be spent why because you ought to know stay with us everybody we'll be right back
Welcome back, everybody. Jim Hall, you ought to know. And Diablo came out of the uh, enclosure back there, and so here he is on camera. Diablo came from where? He also came from a magic show in Vegas. Uh, they said that he did not like to be in the transport cage he needed to be in before the actual act. Uh, they said he was claustrophobic, he would get very upset, so um, they no longer wanted him. But like th with Oscar, they had new cubs coming in, so they have to get rid of the old cats that they don't want to use anymore. It sounds uh, exactly like the puppy mill routine. They just keep moving them on, don't they? Yes, it's unfortunate, especially when you have performing animals um, when they get older and they can't perform anymore you have to make room or I should say the people that are using them have to make room for the new ones that will start being trained and being in the show to make money now give me the website again it's the number four and then everwild.org all right, and people can go there, they can donate, they can actually sign up, adopt a pet, so to speak, and they can actually help make sure these animals get fed and taken care of here at the sanctuary. Yes, and they can also join our free uh, newsletter that they get every month. It will give you um, uh, ideas of what we're, events we're going to be at, things that maybe we have a new rescue we need help with, um, cages, like we're building three new tiger cages here um, this month, and um, it just gives you a lot of updated information. Now, how many how many rescues are there out there? How many of these type of animals, these exotics, are out there needing a place to go? How often do you get called? saying, we got something, come get it. Well, actually, uh, two weeks ago, I got a call for a six-week-old tiger cub from Arkansas that I unfortunately had to turn away because I didn't have current cage space at the time. And then I got a call for a six-month-old cougar cub that was confiscated by Fish and Game that needed a home. And just again, I didn't have the cage space to put him in. Um, currently, there's a magazine that we get, and we find a lot of our rescues in there. And there's about eight to ten uh, ten week old to three and a half year old tigers and lions that need homes right now, right this instant. How many are being turned out, euthanized, just uh, put to death for no good reason? Oh, we've heard uh, the last statistics we got was probably over a year ago, but just in Texas alone, there's hundreds, hundreds. There's thousands of captive uh, bred exotic animals all throughout our United States. Well, you're doing your part here. You certainly are. How many animals do we have here? And again, give us the rundown of the types and what we've got here. Well, we've got 21 big cats here, and we have roughly over probably 30 um, exotic reptiles. Um, we've got nine tigers, uh, three black leopards, one spotted leopard, two bobcats, three servals, uh, Siberian lynx, and I think that's all. Oh, and then two cougars. And then your reptiles, what do you have? Oh, we've got cobras, we've got vipers, gaboon vipers, rhino vipers, um, gila monsters, alligators, um, yeah, rattlesnakes, uh, rosy boas. <laughs> So you even rescue anything that needs rescuing, that end you can rescue? Yes, and uh, occasionally, we don't try to make it a habit, but I even uh, rescue some farm animals, too, All right. when I have to. Well, we've got one of the farm animals here. You're holding one of them. Actually, this is not a farm animal. This is probably one somebody thought was going to be cute as a pet and then needed rescuing, I'm assuming, or something to that nature. But what do you have here? Yes, I have an Amer American alligator right here. He's a few years old. He's probably between four and five years old. Um, unfortunately, we have found in this last year we've probably taken in close to like 10 to 12 alligators some of them don't make it because unfortunately people try to hide them mm -hmm. and they hide them in really bad places like the toilets and then the the bathtubs or you know grungy ponds and stuff trying to hide these from people finding out they're going to get them because they will get go to court now we uh, of course followed the news over the past year we had uh, or the past couple years we actually had one down uh, not far from where you were in Huntington Beach over in San Pedro in one of the uh, waterways over there. Somebody had let one go and they got too big for the bathtub as it were. Uh, is that normal for these sort of things? People along with the tigers just get too big and they can't handle it anymore oh yeah people just don't I, 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 I can't comprehend it maybe it's because I deal with these guys all the time but things that are babies and that look cute or are impressive to show girlfriends or whatever eventually grow up and they get big and they're potentially lethal to people you know they will kill you <laughs> You know, a tiger, when it gets 650 pounds, it will kill you. Well, you're talking about this guy here. Now, this one is how old? 
Uh, this one's only about probably four to five years old. Um, so the, he, this one right here, the American alligators, if I remember correctly, because my, my husband does the reptile side, but I believe they get over 10 feet long when they're full-grown adults. Well, I was going to say, if this one is uh, three to four to five years old at this size, I'm guessing this is about a three-footer now. Yeah, there's a there's big. a good shot of him. There you go. And this one came from where? Uh, this one right here, I believe, came down from Orange County. A lot of them come from Orange County. We've had a few come from Palm Springs. But um, from what we have heard through the grapevine is that last year there was somebody selling them down there for about $50 a pop. All right. Now, these guys, like this one here, what does he normally eat? Uh, he'll eat, like, um, chicken chunks or beef chunks, like stew meat. Uh -huh. Or occasionally when they get bigger to, like, this size, he will eat mice. All right. Well, he's going to grow up, so he'll keep eating more and more. Now, has he tamed down at all? Um, I wouldn't probably say tame too much. I mean, I wouldn't definitely not leave him in the living room with my kids. But I can use these guys because I handle them quite often for educational shows for schools. All right. Well, we're looking forward to that. We're going to have to come back. There's got a lot more information, and we're going to have to follow along and get some people signed up on the website. Give us that again. Is the number four and then everwild.org. All right, and this is a wildlife, let me emphasize that, wildlife exotic animal sanctuary. And these animals are wild. Yes, 100%. <laughs> All right, so we'll never take that for granted. We're going to be back out here, and I'm going to be back to wrap up the show. I want to thank you for having us out here in Phelan. Thank you for coming. All right, well, we're going to be right back to wrap up the show, everybody. Why are we here with this little guy and the tigers and the panthers and the leopards? <laughs> Well, it's all because you ought to know. Stay with us, everybody. We'll be right back. Well, that's going to put the wraps on another show, everybody, for these big animals that we don't take for granted, wild animals, tigers, panthers, spotted leopards, and the like, a lot of reptiles too in this show, the Forever Wild folks here at the Forever Wild Exotic Animal Sanctuary are doing their part to take care of the animals, making sure that they live full lives and finish out their lives right here at this establishment. We're here in Phelan, and you can check out the website at www.foreverwild, the number four, everwild.org. And you can check our website at www.odysseytv.org and tell your friends around the world they can watch us live on the Internet, anytime, day or night. You can pick out your favorite show. Well, we're here at Forever Wild Animal Sanctuary. Why did we come? to learn about the animals and to inform you because you ought to know. See you next time, everybody.